there. Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Real Two Dog here with another vlog. Steve's uh, garage yet, yet again. Today we are changing out the uh, front lower control arms. Uh, we actually wanted to do this a while back. We wanted to do this before the track event that, you know, the video y'all saw, but we just ne didn't have time. So now we're getting to it now. I just got them off eBay. Uh, I'll put in a link in the description if y'all are looking for some. They're just direct OEM replacements with the um, new hard rubber bushings. OEM spec and everything, but nothing too special. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do with these old LCAs is uh, save them because eventually I wanna get nicer like spherical bushings for them. And then I'll use these uh, control arms because they're still good. They're just, you know, they're just old with worn out bushings. I also have uh, floor ball joints ready to go too, but we're just not in the mood to, <laughs> to mess with all that. We're just gonna do the LCAs tonight. The LBJs, I might just take to a, to a shop. There's a shop near where Steve lives that one of his boys works at so he, he he might just hook me up with a good price or something to make the job easier i got this from harbor freight ball, ball joint separator only 20 bucks off uh out of a uh, harbor freight so when you tighten this it presses down and then eventually it'll pop okay and it makes a lot of sound There it goes, yeah. Hopefully the collars and the bolts aren't seized or anything. Cause that's a whole new fucking problem right there. Uh, wanna hit it with some uh, PB? Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do that. <laughs> that's a great <laughs> idea. Hit some PB in this bitch. Just in case, there's nothing wrong with hitting these things with PB. This is some shit. Nice. All right, let's let that PB soak a bit. All right, we'll be back in about 10 minutes or so. 20 minutes later. That was time. <laughs> hey, there we go. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was just bottoming out on the subframe itself. Oh. I thought it was uh, missing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I thought it was like just really hard. While Steve's doing that, I'm gonna grab the new control arm over here, get it ready to swap in. And you can see here, Steve is using a couple extensions and a ratchet to get that out. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yes, it's a little bit of a weird ankle, but not too bad. The, the hardest part was breaking the torque off it initially. Right. There we go. Sweet. All right, guys. Steve just let me know that one of the sizes was loose, but the other side you needed like a kind of like a pry bar or something to, to get it out, but it wasn't too hard. Yeah, it looks like the cushion in this one is shot. You can see it's formed a crack. Yeah. I'm surprised it survived uh, the track. Uh, I actually kind of cracked all the way through. Oof, okay. Damn. <laughs> this one, usually this one is not that bad. I knew these were bad when uh, every, when I was driving, when I drive this car on the streets, you could hear it like, you could hear sounds coming from the control arms when you make turns and stuff. We could totally so, yeah. give this like new life. Oh yeah, I'm definitely saving those. Like I like I mentioned, I'm gonna eventually get some nice premium, you know, uh, spherical bushings to replace those after cleaning them up and stuff like that. That's done. It's almost in position. I just gotta wait for the bolt. Okay. I don't know if Steve uh, made it look. Harder or easier, or it took you like like 15 minutes to do this one side. So it's really not that hard per se. You have the right tools. Yeah, as long as you have the right tools. That ball joint separator, you know that that was probably the biggest help because off camera we were hitting the control arm with a hammer, 
because that's actually a tried and true uh, trick. The vibrations from hitting the control arm will make the ball joint pop out, but that wasn't working. So it's a good thing we had this uh, ball joint separator. Now I gotta do, at least for this car, disconnect the uh, sway bar end link, two bolts, remove the control arm, put the new controller arm back on, and it's just reverse from there. So yeah. Check this out. Oof. Ooh. It actually comes off pretty good. What is this called? Hubble towels, heavy duty cleaning wipes. Oh, okay. Are Us. they like better than Gojo stuff, I guess? No, I think the Gojo one's better. It has more abrasive. Oh, okay. Uh, but it was, it's all Walmart had, because I was looking for the Gojo one, but mm -hmm. it's, this works pretty good. It cleaned my dirty ass shoes like really fast. Okay, shit. We can whiten it pretty easily. Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> well, these these shoes are old as fuck. So. Oh, by the way, we so we found out a uh, a little problem with the RSX. Um, I noticed there was a little spot before I left my house to come here. A little spot under the engine, and you know, lo and behold, it's leaking oil. It's not a lot per se. It it's been a week. It's literally been about a, well actually yeah, it's been a week since the track event. It sat all week and it just, you know, leaked in that one spot all week. It was directly under what Steve was saying might be, might be the, the main seal, the rear main seal, where the engine and the transmission uh, uh, made up. So hopefully it's not. That's a job that we, neither of us really want to do. I might have to just see if, uh, you know, one of our mechanic friends could uh, hook us up with uh, with that job, we're also thinking that maybe the oil pan gasket might be have gone bad, so we're kind of contemplating on maybe getting a new oil pan or just do, redoing the the gasket around that. So don't know, but she's weak in oil. It's not bad. She's, but still, it's still a, it's still a problem regardless. So now we need to tackle eventually. The screws, I the bolts, I believe, are done cleaning. It should be. It doesn't it doesn't sound like it's on anymore. So, all right, the bolts are clean and everything. And as you can see, there's one bolt in. Almost in. And then. Get it lined up. Oh, okay. And then uh, Steve is working on the other side. Just a balancing act at this point in, in lining up the bushings of the. Control arm and the bolts. There we go. There we go. Sweet. <clears throat> there we go. That's what's up. It's about 70 foot pounds. So I put it at like a little higher. Okay, yeah. And then from here on is just putting back on the sway bar end link and then bolting on the, or bolt, putting the bolt back on for the uh, lower ball joint. And that's pretty much it. It's not necessarily a, a complicated job. It's just, you know, take off a few things and then put a new thing back in and reverse. So the lower ball joint, once it's in the LCA and all that, the bolt that bolts it down, that holds it down, per factory uh, manual says 46 to 51 uh, foot pounds of torque. And there's a range because there's a hole that goes through that threaded part of the ball joint to put the cotter pin through. So in and around there, as long as you could get the cotter pin through, you'll be fine. All right, so Steve's putting in the cotter pin for the lower ball joint, and then we're just gonna tighten down this uh, front sway bar end link to the control arm, and this side's good. Go ahead and do the other side. I'm not gonna record that because that would be pretty redundant. After both sides are done, we'll get back to you eventually. All right, guys, we're back, and we finished the other side without a hiccup. Um, cars back down on the ground, uh, wheels torqued down. This is a pretty simple night, you know, like, um, Nothing too crazy. So yeah, we're just gonna go for a test drive now, just to make sure everything is fine, but also get some food, because we're hungry. But yeah, it's not really much of a how to do the LCAs on these cars, on these RSXs, but you know, it's just a vlog. What, what, you know, vlog, 
vlog life, you know. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see y'all on the next video. Peace.